asked the establishment of the Transnet Ports Authority, an independent subsidiary of Transnet with its own board. President Ramaphosa added that Transnet will invest 100 billion rand over the next five years to modernize ports. The president is answering questions from the media. Let's listen in. Uh, a question that seems relevant, but in the end it is a question that should be asked once that process is done to say, okay, are you able to fulfill all these requirements? And if you are able to fulfill them, show us the money. And that is when, as they say in the classics, that is when the tire hits the tar, or the rubber hits the tar. And that is when finally a deal is done. Right now we are at the preliminary stages and I don't think uh, one is able to say in a definitive way uh, that that is the case because their own ability to raise the money or to come up with the money is really also going to depend on what they find in SAA because if they find there are worms, if they find there are snakes and all that, they may say, ah, uh ah, -uh, we, we don't want to proceed. And so due diligence means that you are being very careful and on both sides, on the state side and on the other side as well. And as often happens with these transactions, in the end, much as you've gone through a number, you then have to give one uh, the exclusivity. One must then have exclusive um, ability to go forward, to go and look at the company. So this one has been chosen to have the exclusivity to go through this process. And afterwards, a determination will be made on both sides, whether they are the best suitors and the best acquirers or not. Portia, I think you now have to come and sing for your lunch. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. President, uh, Ministers, uh, Public Enterprises and Transport. Um, so, um, interesting questions um, that I, I should answer, and actually maybe what we should do is do an invite to the media uh, to, so that we can have a conversation with you, because it's a lot more complicated than just meet the eye. Than just, yeah. than just me talking. Well, right. even as, as just answering the question as well. So the 94-day delay really doesn't exist, and really I'd appreciate uh, getting a little bit more detail where that came from. Um, at the ports. However, having said that, we accept the fact that it's a complicated system. The nomination of vessels is done by customers. That's not done by ourselves. Uh, we've actually been quite upfront uh, in terms of discussing some of the challenges that we've had on the rail system, in particular cable theft. And we've been making a lot of noise and we, the, the mining industry is on side with this. And so, and I think Mr. President and Minister Praveen Gordon would know that. And soon the Minister of Transport as well is going to be inundated with letters from industry uh, because that is a serious problem in our system. On any given week, 30 to 40 percent of the delays on the rail system are because of cable theft that we have, um, which are truly delaying and they damage at the end of the day. So there's enough of that that we can put on the table. Mr. President, as we were talking as well, one of the challenges that we've had, which is tied to the 1064 process, uh, where in some of the locals that we knew we needed to change some of the parts uh, which were coming to the end of warranty, and because of the whole tassel, we've struggled uh, to replace traction motors uh, and the rest and the like. And then, I mean, it's a fact. Uh, that we have delayed in some of the maintenance of the track in, uh, throughout the country. And in particular, some areas are more sensitive than, than other areas. So on a weekly basis, we have a report that gets produced on how each of the corridors operates. Uh, we have that available, and it's not a secret. Uh, we're quite happy to share that so people have a sense of, of all of the challenges that we're facing uh, in, in the system. So that I, and, and really, I, I, uh, Ayanda is here, who's our spokesperson, and she can arrange uh, to have a meeting. So let me, the, the other issue, uh, Mr. President, that came up was how long it will take for us to get to corporatization of TNPA. 
For us, it is, in fact, a bringing in of a new area for tra era for Transnet, where we increasingly see ourselves as a, a holding company. So it's uh, full steam ahead on our side. Um, as uh, you would know, we've already had a deem board for TNPA. So it's just a matter of uh, finalizing of what assets would, uh, what um, the total assets that go into TNPA, including the debts that we have to have. And as you know, when you borrow money from people, you need to get the lenders to approve our separation of debts, um, uh, of liabilities and assets between Transnet and themselves. But we, we full steam ahead. Uh, the team at TNPA also are working on that. But, Mr. President, I would re be remiss if I didn't deal with this issue of indices. Now, I hear you when you say that we must accept the fact that we're at the bottom of a ranking. But I also worry about this uh, fascination that we have with South Africans, is that the worse the data, the happier we are, and the more embracing we are of it as the truth. But it isn't. How many ports does Egypt have? It's just one port, Port Said. And if you're investing for one port, it's not the same thing as having to invest for seven commercial ports. And so the point that was made earlier about the commercial port strategy being one of a complementary port system, which is what we're implementing, should see us come back in terms of the ranking. So it's, a, it's, a sim it's too simplistic to say port said relative to South Africa, because you've got to look at a series of indices. And then looking at the series of indices, you then start identifying the areas in which we have weaknesses. I find it amazing that the very same World Bank has another index, which is called the Logistics Performance Index, right? And we are ranked number 33. Nobody talks about that. Everybody is fascinating with, fascinated with 347 and 349. We know those numbers. We will be dealing with it. Worst of all, that data point is for the year when we had COVID, January 2020 to December 2020, we had the hardest lockdown. And one of the things they were looking at, what were the volumes that were moving out of your ports? So I'd, not to be defensive, but I do think that it's about time that we actually just reflected the truth. But in as far as engaging with the media around all of the operations of Transnet, we are more than open to, because frankly, as you rightfully put it, I couldn't agree with you more. All of the assets of Transnet belong to every single one of us. One of the big challenges um, that we've put to the team is that how do we get back to a point where all of us in South Africa understand that we have stewardship responsibility for these assets and that when there is cable theft, when there's any problem that happens, we have the very same owners of these assets start to bring the information to the fore because we know and people would know who the syndicate leaders are who are the cause of some of these problems. And our biggest challenge, even yesterday, we arrested some people who were, doing, uh, were involved in fuel theft. But we get to the guys who get hired, but we're struggling to get to the leaders of the syndicates. We get there. They live in South Africa. They are South Africans. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Portia Darby. Colleagues, we, um, I think there was one question that was referred to, or I think where, where the President referred to Minister Gordon. I just want to check, Minister, if you do want to come in on that one. Otherwise, I would also, uh, mindful of time, like us to move towards a close with uh, questions by Mike Cohen and Karin Duplessis. Uh, Karin Duplessis, just to warn you, Mr. President, has indicated that she will deviate with her question. She will deviate. So, um, so you have advance warning, and then finally, uh, our team to Gardner, who's in the room with us. Um, so let's start with um, let's start with just to find out if Ms. Minister Gordon did want to join. Otherwise, we'll go to Mike Cohen, Minister. Now, the president, as a business person, can answer that question much better than I, I can, and it's done brilliantly. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Then, uh, then I think we'll go to Mike uh, Karim and Arti, who's in the room with us. Thank you. Mark? Thanks, Ryan. Mike Cohen from Business News. Can you please tell us what this reorganization of, of the ports will mean for port tariffs? Thanks. Karim? Thank you, Tyrone. Um, good afternoon, Mr. President. Uh, I have two questions, and I'm glad Tyrone warned you that I'll be that very obedient. Uh, the one is about something that we're uh, very preoccupied with in Khartoum at the moment. Um, 
Uh, we talk about economic. You were talk you've been talking about economic recovery and investment, but we're um, really feeling the third wave here um, in Gauteng, COVID-19. Uh, I just want to know: Does the increasing rate of infections in Gauteng worry you? And do you think it's worth keeping the economy open at the expense of people's health at this point? And a second question, there's another Sadiq Summit tomorrow on Kabodo, the administration of Cabo uh, Can we expect to see any decision on interventions um, and what kind of interventions do you expect anything? Thank you. Atem Dengaiba, in the room with us. Uh, thank you so much and good afternoon to the President. I'm also going to deviate completely. Uh, just to add on to the question that was asked just now, um, we understand that the NCCC is due to meet and uh, like uh, the previous speaker just mentioned that Gauteng is currently experiencing a surge in the COVID-19 figures. Are you considering a different uh, level in terms of restrictions for Gauteng. And now that you're here, President, we don't normally get you uh, to ask questions in Cape Town, but the Western Cape is venturing into trying to procure its own vaccines. I'm just interested to find out what your view is that and as far as it's concerned. Thank you. Thanks, Arti. That was our final question today, Mr. President. I'm going to ask Portia to come and ask, answer the question on tariffs because I, I wouldn't know that. I want to be enlightened by Portia as well because from time to time I do look at uh, the tariffs ranking of uh, ports in the world. And uh, Portia, I last looked at it about a year and a half ago. So maybe I should keep it on my screen now and see how we rank in relation to, to ports. In relation to, to current diplomacy's question on uh, the, the infection rates in Gauteng, whether I'm worried, yes, I am deeply worried. We are seeing uh, the infection rates that seem to be much higher than what we have seen before. And uh, uh, Premier Makura uh, is dealing with uh, this challenge as best as he can. And I know that the Acting Minister of Health is also involved, and we are very grateful uh, to have a uh, soldier's corps who are able to, uh, to, to go in and assist uh, the deployment of more medical personnel is obviously one of the things we need, as well as hospital beds. And I know that uh, they are opening up uh, as many hospital beds as they possibly can. And of course, the challenge of uh, uh, oxygen availability and ventilators is another one. So we, we are involved in a very, very serious uh, uh, situation in relation to the pandemic in Gauteng, and we're also seeing it rising uh, in other parts of the world. Here as well in the Western Cape, I was talking to Premier Alan Winder earlier, and we're seeing signs of that as well. So we, we are in the third wave, as we, we did say, and the issue of uh, moving on to another level is a matter that is going to be discussed by the NCCC, and the NCCC will meet and make recommendations. And uh, clearly, uh, there the seems to be uh, indications that we've got to uh, increase the measures, uh, particularly in Gauteng, uh, that we have uh, imposed or put in place. Uh, and Karen, you ask a very uh, important question uh, what do we do uh, as, as uh, the infection rate is going up? Uh, do we keep the economy going at the expense of lives? And we've always said that we will have a balance, a balance because uh, the lives of our people are extremely important, as are their livelihoods. So we have always sought to keep 
a very good balance. When the pandemic started, we did impose a very hard lockdown, possibly harder than many other nations, and that helped to bring the rate of infections down, and uh, everybody uh, did see the need for it. But with time, we had to ease off, and uh, we had to move from level five to four, and finally to three, and two, and one, and now we've moved back to three, and the infections are just uh, continuing to rise. So that calls for us to review exactly where we are and continue to see how best we can create that delicate balance between saving lives as well as uh, the livelihoods uh, of, of our people. Now, uh, Ati raised another question related to the issue of um, uh, COVID. Uh, you raised whether we will move to another level. The answer is the same. We are going to be making the assessments. And uh, the suggestion from the Western Cape uh, that uh, they will uh, uh, acquire uh, vaccines We've uh, always said that, you know, the whole process of acquiring vaccines uh, all over the world, all over wo the world is a, is a government-inspired <laughs> process. And uh, we, we, we are looking at national governments worldwide being the ones who are the key players. And even vaccine manufacturers have uh, developed a greater comfort in dealing with governments because there are guarantees that have to be signed and they can only really be signed by national governments where we negotiate with these uh, um, pharmaceutical companies and at times it is country to country. So you know yesterday, last night I was talking to the president of the European Union about uh, vaccines, and uh, we are going to have a further uh, conversation, and uh, she's going to do her own consultation, uh, President uh, Ursula van der Leyen, uh, and it is at government level. Now, of course, uh, everybody, not only the Premier of the Western Cape, but everybody, including companies and so forth, would like to acquire vaccines, and that would be well and good if in the ecosystem that now currently exists, it was really possible. The ecosystem is such that uh, it is national governments who have been able to offer all the guarantees that uh, these pharmaceutical companies want. Uh, in case of failure of, of the vaccine and many people get sick or whatever happens, it is national government that has to come to the party, and that is why they've had the comfort to be able to uh, strike deals uh, with uh, with national companies, I mean, with the national governments, rather. Um, the issue uh, of uh, Karim, of uh, tomorrow's meeting in Mozambique, I'll be traveling to Mozambique, we're going to have a SADAC summit in Mozambique, and of course, one of the issues on the agenda is the uh, uh, conflict in Cabo Delgado in Mozambique. That is going to be discussed, and uh, this is going to follow on the discussions and the decisions that were taken in the past that also include the recommendations from the assessment team that was sent to go and make an assessment on what type of intervention that SADC needs to make. And tomorrow we are going to be receiving further that report. And uh, we obviously are all convinced that uh, we cannot allow a situation where insurgents just infiltrate a country, take over a particular area, a region, and uh, kill people and uh, displace many people uh, just like that. And we, we all sit and not uh, support. So support is going to is required and support is going to be given so that uh, uh, we are able to restore stability uh, in, in Mozambique. The extent of the support is something that obviously we are still going to discuss because it is a matter that need, we all need to reach agreement on. I think that covers everything save for the tariffs. 
and um, Portia will, will answer that as well. Thank you, Mr. President. My name is Pepe Silinga. I'm the Managing Executive in charge of uh, uh, Transnet National Port Authority, Honorable Ministers and MEC as well. Um, the tariff determination process is a legislated process. It's underpinned by some scientific uh, process um, in the sense that uh, there are inputs, some of which will be a function of what's going to be happening in the uh, finalization of the computerization process. One of those, as an example to illustrate, would be the cost of debt, how much debt you take in to, on, on board. Um, to the extent that we are creating public assets with the strategic intent of lowering the cost of doing business, that input which is uh, considered by the regulator of South Africa, um, they are the ones who make inputs to them, but they are the ones who actually determine that. Safe to say that uh, in the past year, there's been a significant reduction, particularly on the mineral side of things. And their intention, as correctly pointed out, is to reduce the cost of uh, uh, doing business. So the details will unfold, Mr. President, as we finalize um, the, uh, the implementation of the decision taken. But ultimately, the determinant is the Port Regulator of South Africa. Thank you. Yeah, I would have said the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pepe, for that uh, input. Um, that, that does bring us to the end of today's session. I want to thank you, Mr. President, and your delegation for um, joining us today and Porsche for, host, for hosting. The President does need to set sail for his next engagement, so we're going to call this closed. Thank you very much to uh, our colleagues in the media for joining us today, and thank you to the technical team for making this interaction possible. Thank you very much. More news coming up after a short break. Stay with us.